Hello, and welcome to Open Source Software Development. As always, I'm Bart Massey, and as always, I hope you're staying safe and well out there and uh, are ready for another talk about the exciting, I guess, world of open source licensing. Today, I want to concentrate on a little more practical matter and hopefully a little shorter one, which is how to actually apply licensing, put licensing on your open source project. And this is a really simple process. It won't take too long to describe, but if you do it right, it will be a lot better in the long run than if you don't do it right. It's one of those things that you should set up right at the beginning. So let's get started with that. Again, before I really get started, I want to remind you, I am not an attorney. None of this is competent legal advice. None of it is. And so please treat it as any layperson's thing. If you need real, genuine legal advice, you need to con contact a lawyer. So the idea of open IP, we talked about IP in some detail last time and mentioned open, mentioned open IP a little bit, but the real idea here is that we're really going to create stuff together and share it freely. It's a different concept at least at its heart than commercial or proprietary development is. Now, some of the reasons you might do it might be very commercial or profit-oriented reasons, but at the end of the day, you're doing something a little different than a company that wants to own everything themselves, and so they build it in secret and keep it secret as much as they can while still selling it to people. As I mentioned last time, the typical focus in open source IP laws typically licenses for copyrighted material and that material is most commonly source code. So we're really talking about licensing computer programs in source form and we're really talking about granting a license that licenses away some of the authors, some of your individual rights so that other people can have the benefit not only of being able to look at your source code, but to modify it, repair it, exchange it, distribute fixes, etc. And as we've talked about before, there, and we'll talk about again in detail next time when we talk about specific open source licenses, there's sort of two things. There's sort of vanilla, uh, Creative Commons, open source sort of permissive licenses that basically try to sign away most of your rights and don't hold anything back. There's also the viral style licenses like the GPL that insist that others who receive your source code also share it within parameters. And again, we'll talk about that next time. But be aware that the licenses are at opensource.org and per the reading I've listed um, on the syllabus for this course, the GitHub open source legal guide is actually quite clear about li what licenses you might consider using, and I agree with them on that if you're at a loss for what license to take. But let's, so let's assume that you've picked a license and you have the text of that open source license in front of you, and we'll start the process there. Now you're gonna to have to mark up your work your work may not even have any code in it yet at this point. This is, again, a good step to do very, very early, but you need to mark up your work with information about the copyright and license so that it's protected properly. The first thing you wanna do probably is put in your readme, you do have a readme, right? Put a statement about the license. This is, for my works, this is essentially what I do when I license a piece of open source software. I say, oh, this work is, you know, I put a license section in the README. I say this work is released under the whatever license, the MIT license or the GPL or whatever. And please see the file license in this distribution for license terms. There's a four that's crept off the notes here. But the idea here is to get it right in front of people, what license it's under. I usually put this near the bottom of the README. It doesn't necessarily need to be at the top, but get people an idea under what terms they can use your software. Because remember, in the absence of a grant of license, they can't legally do much of anything with it. Maybe they can read it, 
online since you posted it online and that sort of implies that but beyond that there's really not much they're allowed to do with it so this tells them how to find out what they can do with it and your license file should start with the word copyright this is an this is a copyright notice as they currently stand in u.s and international copyright law they should always look basically like this they should start with the word copyright capitalized followed by a c in a circle if you can't use a c in a circle if you're not uh, able to type the unicode c in a circle for some reason you may instead use a c in parentheses like that that is also recognized by courts as a legitimate copyright symbol but it should be copyright and then a copyright symbol then the year of copyright not the rest of the date just the year and the name of the copyright holder the legal name in this case my legal name is bart massey so that's what i'm going to put on most of what i write if you write cop code for a company as a work for hire you should put the company's name there but the rest of it will stay the same and this format is sort of the format courts expect to see and so it's really how you want to put that copyright notice and i put it at the top of the license file because that's the place that it's most important to get it to make it clear who owns the copyright on this software is your copy software copyrighted and your work in general copyrighted even if you don't have a copyright notice absolutely but there are legal provisions that allow triple damages and some other things if if uh, you've followed some terms and one of those terms is to put a copyright notice on there you're in a better legal position plus it makes it clear who owns the software which is really important it's not all just legal a lot of it's social signaling i want people to know that a this is the authors of the software b the software is uh released under a license so that's how my license file is going to start what if i update the software do i need to update the copyright notice i do not this this can always be that date there can always be the original date that the software was first started and placed under copyright that really reads as copyright to 2020 and beyond so that's fine and what if there are multiple copyright holders list them a nice little oxford list there bart massey comma ben massey and joni massey or whatever is an absolutely legitimate thing to list for joint copyright do all the copyright holders have to be listed in the copyright notice? What if somebody contributes later, for example? No, no. Really, it's just fine to leave the principal authors or the original authors in this copyright notice because that provides a starting point for whoever is going to look at it, even if other people happen to also hold copyright in. The next line of my license file is usually this work is released under the blah blah license where you know this is the gpl license or the, the general public license or the mit license or the bsd license or whatever and i put it in quotes because i don't i want it to be clear to the court later on that the license terms are the stuff down below and if somebody goes and looks up on the internet by the way a link is never okay in a license file to the actual copyright terms you should have the terms as text sitting in the file so that there's never any question later about which version of the mit license was meant or which whatever uh, the term should be in the license file and then i put the text of the license and that's you know that's just literally copied and pasted from opensource.org i will copy and paste the terms of the license and stick them there in the file and now i've got a file called license in my home directory it's a text file you know the, my project's root directory that's a text file that contains the license information so now it's in the readme it's in the license file what's going on and ideally i do this less than i used to but it's honestly a really good idea at the start of every file in your program every source file in your program or whatever this work is released under the blah license in a comment please see the file license in this distribution for license terms Again, I'm not an attorney. I'm reporting to you what I do. Attorneys might quibble with this. Attorneys usually want more than this. But the fact of the matter is that, based on my study as a non-attorney, I think this is enough that it accomplishes the goals. So 
what happens if someone violates your license or if you violate theirs? Well, the easiest thing to have happen is to ignore it. And that's what happens most of the time. But if you decide to take action against them, you'd usually start with something called a cease and desist letter. See what a cease and desist means? It means just what its name sounds like. It says stop doing what you're doing and don't do it again. And most courts won't take a lawsuit seriously unless it starts with a C and D letter as the initial communication. They really want to see that you've tried to handle the problem without resort to the courts. And if you haven't bothered to do that first, the courts aren't usually interested in getting involved. So that's how it would be if you found that somebody had violated your license. It's also how it's gonna be if somebody else feels you're violating their license. Um, so assuming that you inadvertently or whatever use someone's software without the right under copyright to use it, it's gonna start with you receive a cease and desist letter in the mail. And my advice to you in that case is the same as the advice about what to do if it's the other way around, which is don't start it up with the legal system. It's not in your best interest. If somebody, somebody sends you a C&D, you may want to contact an attorney about how to proceed, but you certainly want to cease and desist. There's very rarely, if ever, any point in arguing about this stuff with open source software because you don't have the budget to fight a suit and don't have enough commitment typically in your software to really fight over it. The other way around, if somebody infringes you, you send them a letter and say, hey, please stop doing this. And if they don't stop or say no, then your choices are to try to find some attorney that can help go with you. The problem is that there's a rule of thumb of lawsuits, which is a non-attorney I can communicate quite clearly, which is that you can't win a civil suit. It's literally unwinnable. If you literally lose, then you'll have wasted a lot of time, on, uh, money on attorney's fees. You've also wasted a lot of your life, which you'll never ever get back. If on the other hand, you win, congratulations, you'll get some money damages. They will rarely compensate you for the amount of time and money you've spent messing with this. But remember, most cases are settled before they go to court, which means that the amount of money that the other side's gonna be offering is gonna be small, probably won't cover your legal costs up to that point. If you decide to go to court anyway, well, now your legal costs balloon, and at the end of the day, even if you receive a very favorable settlement, the most likely outcome there is that that motivates the other side to appeal that judgment and now you get it really into the legal cost adventure as you start to go up that food chain. And that can become the only thing you spend your time doing. Uh, the people who win either way, the people who would strongly encourage you, and I'm joking here, attorneys are generally good people, but seriously, the people who win either way are the attorneys. This is how attorneys get billable hours. One side's attorneys are spending the client's money to as plaintiffs and the other set of attorneys are spending the client's money as defendants. And that's not a game you wanna play. You wanna to try to avoid being involved in the legal system. And one of the reasons that I'm making such a big deal about this formal, you know, formality around protecting your stuff is it sends a clear signpost to people. And what you'll find is with that kind of social signaling, you just won't be involved in lawsuits. The only time I've ever gotten a C&D letter in now in excess of 30 years, really 35 years of doing open source was one crazy person because there are always crazy people in the world who made some terrible mistakes and for 50 bucks in bucks of long ago, I found a competent attorney and they called the other person's attorney and they agreed to go away in terms of me not owning their house. It's really, really rare. Of all my friends, I don't know anybody who's been involved 
directly on behalf of software they wrote themselves open source in any kind of legal stuff so all this stuff sounds scary what we're trying to do here is set you up so that you won't get involved in the legal system and that is definitely the end game in open source believe it or not after a couple lectures and one still to come most open source developers spend essentially all their time doing open source not open source law so don't panic just try to keep clear of it again we should talk a little bit about the sort of collective copyright situation because this is a thing you need to think about as you're licensing uh you have sort of two bad choices as you accept contributions in open source one is that the people who contribute still hold copyright on their work and what that means in effect is that all of you who work on the project own joint collective copyright in the project that you as a collective you know hold the copyright to that stuff and that means that you can't unilaterally do things you can't for example decide i'm going to relicense this software even if you wrote most of it because the other people get a say too once there's a reasonable number of people that's going to be really hard to get everybody's permission to do this relicensing and the uh other alternative is something called copyright assignment that's real common or other kinds of you know copyright agreements uh, contributor agreements uh, contributor agreements copyright assignment the idea here that you get people who contribute stuff to sign a thing and like I say a very common one for corporate open source is sure we're providing this open source but if you want your contributions to go into our branch of this open source project then you have to agree to assign your copyright for your contributions to us as a company. And that has some big advantages, not just for the company, but for the software. It means that things like license changes can happen easier. It means that there's a clear plaintiff or defendant in legal cases. But I am among the people who generally wouldn't contribute to such a project. I don't have any interest in getting involved in the legal system there again, and I really don't have any interest in having somebody else own the copyright to stuff that I did. And so, you know, these things are balanced off. I generally do plan A. Like I say, big companies generally do plan B. There's this whole issue floating around of license compatibility. What happens when parts of the software are under incompatible licenses? What does that mean? Well, it means that part of the software you're using was originally written by one author under, and put under one license. Another was written by another author and put under another license. They're both open source licenses approved by the OSI, but they may disagree on some of the stuff and if they do disagree then it gets really bad really fast it may be that the whole license you've granted is invalid and therefore you're violating potentially at that point one of the one or more of the licenses so if you go read the literature on license compatibility it was a big topic five or ten years ago everybody was very excited about this problem of license compatibility the fact of the matter is that it hasn't played out to be nearly as big a problem as it was painted, like a lot of problems in open source, but it's still a thing you have to pay attention to. Um, notice that, you know, if you don't have a valid license, nobody can use your stuff, so you need to make sure your license terms are such that it makes sense. What's a compatible license? It's one where the terms don't disagree. If I were, for example, to combine software, an easy example, combine software written under the two clause BSD license and under the MIT license, well, both those licenses say essentially the same thing and there's no stipulations of one license that the other license contradicts. And so I can absolutely just mix and match open source I've grabbed from different repositories that come under these two licenses. As long as I preserve copyright notices and provenance and stuff, that is a perfectly legal thing to do. And effectively my work, you know, contains a sort of a new synthetic license. I, parts of it are still under whatever license I chose for my own work. Parts of it are under whatever licenses are, were in place for the things that came in. 
And the, the sort of standard example here, the most common case is the GPL, remember, is a viral license. Does that mean I can't use MIT or BSD license software with GPL software in the same program? No, it just means that under the terms of the GPL, then the whole program becomes GPL. Does the BSD or MIT license forbid that? No, absolutely not. There's nothing in those licenses that contradict that. And so you actually have a case of compatible licenses. And so now you've got a GPL program. And so watch out for that. Pay attention especially to weird licenses that aren't OSI approved. So your corporate license that you're granted by, you know, say an embedded compiler developer, uh, even if it's not a particularly restrictive license, you probably need a careful reading and probably honestly an attorney to be able to say whether you can include that in open source software you produce. The answer is probably no in that case, honestly. So watch out for that. So that's what I have for you. I mean, the real key part of this, of this thing is this part that I went to here. This is how you slap your stuff onto your software and I'll expect that to see any software in people, that in any software from people I work with. It's been really common historically to see a lot of stuff out there that was intended as open source, but effectively wasn't open source because you couldn't find a license for it. You couldn't find any right to use it under copyright and or to modify it or to do whatever. And so you don't wanna put people in that position. Take care of the legal niceties up front and then don't worry about the legal too, system too much. So that's that, that's applying a license to your stuff. If you look in my GitHub repo, I actually have a thing called apply license, which is a shell script help, intended to automate some of that process. I honestly don't use it much anymore, but for a while there I used it a lot. It essentially automates these so next time I want to talk specifics. I'm going to talk about a whole bunch of open source licenses and describe to you why people use them and what the differences between them are to give you some idea of what's out there in the open source license community. And then hopefully we'll be done with legal week here and we can get on to more pleasant things. Thanks all for listening. Again, stay safe out there. I hope to talk to you again soon.